you guys. I've been thinking about you guys a lot. What can help you? You need to learn how to sell and there needs to be a course that goes down to the beginner level, to the intermediate level. Let's talk about the benefits of selling. Once you learn how to sell, you can sell more than stuff or more than services. You can sell ideals. Let's say you and your girl are having an argument, but because you don't know how to sell, you can't win that argument. How would you like to be able to win arguments with your girl? Reason that's not going to work. Once you learn certain sales techniques, you will learn how to sell your girl on certain concepts that you currently cannot. Another benefit, you will be able to win and influence people. This is all sales. You know, many people will call it influence. Many people call it salesmanship. There are many different core aspects to selling and influencing people and getting your point across and getting people to buy into your ideals. That's part of what happens when you learn how to sell. It's more, it's deeper, it's bigger than you selling a product or service and making some money. This ability, learning how to sell, can literally change your life. I got your attention, right? But you're like, hey, Glendon, I don't know how to sell anything. I don't have any experience. I don't have a lot of time. Let's address the second thing. If you could develop a skill that can double or triple your income in a matter of weeks or a few months, would you make the time? Just a question, just a question. You don't have any experience. If you have no experience, you need to do direct response marketing. How does that help you sell in a digital world? How does that help you move YouTube videos, move eBooks, audio books, it's online courses? Well, remember this, selling isn't about the new technique. Selling is appealing to very old, very consistent human emotions. So yeah, we have an iPhone and we have new computers and we have these new platforms, but we as people, we haven't changed. And that helps you, it helps you tremendously. So you're gonna learn some stuff that has helped people make money for thousands of years, not hundreds of years, but thousands of years. There's always been people who have sold. So you will be joining a community of great and awesome people because this isn't the kind of selling where you could sell ice to an Eskimo, sell ice cream to a polar bear. I don't have any of that. What I have is aligning your intentions, your purpose with their intentions and their purpose. Once you align those two things together, the money just comes. So that's what we're going to be doing. How many of you want to be great salespeople and how many of you want to be above average salespeople and how many of you don't give a damn about selling Put that in the comments because those of you who want to be exceptional salespeople and exceptional salespeople make high six figures up to low seven figures. I have an offer for you. I'm going to build it out like I built 30 days to $2,500, but it's going to be sales based. And I actually put in a section today talking about offers. Now what are offers? You go on a date, you put on a nice shirt, you put some smell good on, you shine your shoes, you get a haircut, you wash your car, right? Those are elements of an offer because you're offering yourself to the girl. You dress yourself up, you've created an offer. Or you could be like me, I have showed up on dates dressed like this because I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't like the merchandise, you don't like the dressed up merchandise. But I am being silly. Essentially, what you want to do is give the proper presentation of whatever you're trying to sell, which means you may clean it up, like for Craigslist and um, selling stuff on eBay. I sold several computers on eBay recently, and you know what I did? I took some glass cleaner, I took some computer cleaner, I took a little thing where you blow air, and I cleaned them all up. And I took 
very nice photos. I took some of the best photos I've ever seen on eBay. They were the best photos ever. It was the largest photos. It was awesome. It was amazing. Are you tired of winning yet? This stuff matters when you're trying to appeal to this person because there's something that we're going to touch on that many folks never ever mention because they've not sold a lot of stuff and that is subliminal selling. It's very important and this is why you will see all of these gurus, these uh, Lambo guys, all of a sudden they've changed their tune because people have been questioning their backgrounds because what they've been saying doesn't match up with the subliminal message that they're sending. Subliminal messaging, subliminal selling is super powerful. It is crazy good. It is awesome. And we will talk about that in the course and I'll teach you how to do it. Yes, I'm going to teach you a lot of stuff. And for the first hundred people, I'm going to get on the phone with you and I'm going to ask you a few questions to point you in the right direction. As this offer fills up, it could take a few weeks to get to some of y'all. So that's the deal. We're going to learn how to sell. We're going to learn how to present offers. We're going to learn how to do subliminal selling and we're going to learn how to make a lot of money. Yes, we are. So if you're ready to make a lot of money, if you're ready to move to the next level and if you have no experience, not a problem. I will say this. If you have experience, you could literally double your income in a matter of a few months. If you already have a sales job, but you're not really good in a lot of these things, this will help you. So this is for the beginner and this is for the intermediate. If you are an advanced person, probably teach you some stuff you don't know. So if you're ready to change your life, if you're ready to change your income, if you're ready to change the numbers that go into your bank account, go below the video and you've got two options and I'm going to see what y'all do. You can get ask for the money direct links below, or you can get, never broke action pack, which has asked for the money in it. Just saying, see what y'all going to do. <laughs> so the links below and I'll see you in this live stream coming up in a very, very short period of time. We're going to discuss sales, baby. Yes, sales. And it's a great profession. It's a great thing. And if you learn how to sell properly, it will change your life and it will change the life of anyone that is close to you, i.e. the chick that you are boning, change her life too, because you'll have more money. Then some of you may change chicks because you got more money. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, putting it out there, just putting it out there. Hey, this is Glendon with Making Money with Storage and Auctions. I was actually uh, working with a friend today and you, <laughs> he brought something up. We were buying a lot of storage units and we got a lot of stuff that was really good but it didn't really fit into our selling profile and I really would feel bad about just throwing it away so we really donated a lot of stuff I was pretty much going to Goodwill and other places every week well one day I just let you know just let stuff stack up a lot of stuff stacked up and it filled up a 16 foot truck Mostly clothes, 90% clothes, but there were computers, you know, with the big CTR monitors and things. We just just gave them away, gave them the goodwill, put an ad on Craigslist and just said, hey, free. Because it didn't work for us, but somebody could benefit from it. Well, one day I had the truck loaded and I had to get the stuff off the truck because I had to go get a unit. And then I had to go get some furniture. So it was like, I got to do this and the guys were going somewhere else with the other truck. So I go over to Goodwill and it's about 11.30 and I get there and the little guy, he's a little, he's a little bitty slim dude and his eyes get big and he's like, oh, what's in the truck? I said, oh, don't worry, don't worry, no furniture, he's like, yeah, just clothes. He said, oh, if you have furniture, you got to go to the back. I said, like, no, no, it's only clothes. He said, okay. All right, so I come out the truck, well, I pull up in the little thing because they had this little turnabout because they used to drop off in the Goodwill store that was in Lilburn because it wasn't that far away. So we go there. <laughs> I raise up the door. Holy moly, man! What do you got? You got 18 children? I don't know where this guy was from. I don't, I don't know, but he was funny. He's like, you got 18 children and 15 wives. Oh my god! It's like, well, 
I have a thrift store and these are the things that are just not going to sell so I figure I can give them to you versus throwing them away. He said, oh, that's very charitable. Uh, you need to come back. I'm like, what? I'm here by myself and that's a lot. <laughs> it's like, dude, I'm not coming back and I'm about to start pulling this stuff off. I'm just stack it up here. I've done it before and y'all eventually get it. He said, okay. So he, he, he puts his hand up on his head. It's like, oh. Some lot of clothes. He's going. Oh my God! Woo! Oh, I'm, I'm pulling stuff off, and he somehow miraculously find for the people. They come out, and they've got the bins, and I'm just throwing stuff in the bins, throwing the stuff in the bins. And it takes about 15 minutes to unload the truck. That's how. I mean, from the ruler to the two. I mean, clothes stacked all the way. Then in the back, there were some bins of albums and books and things like that. And the whole time, he's like. Oh my God, it's just like that car in your circus where the clowns just keep coming out. It's like they keep coming, they keep coming, they keep coming. <laughs> he was like, man. And it was kind of a warm day. He was drenched. They were drenched. And he said, of course, you would want the receipt. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll get a receipt. Because even market the stuff at 10 cents a piece, it was still several thousand dollars worth of stuff. But and it got to the point where I know one time I came and he saw the truck <laughs> he went the other way he, he just dipped <laughs> I didn't know sometimes they have people there who are like working uh, doing community service and everything and then this other guy comes out What's going on, boys and girls? How you living? How are you today? We got some stuff that's going on. Thought I'd try something a little different. A little uh, extra, so to speak. Got a question. How many of you are really interested in learning how to sell better? And before you answer that question, if you learn how to sell better, your whole life will be better. Just saying. All right, so I'm not going to hold you in suspense. There's one thing that you need to do that you need to have or your sales career or your ability to sell is just not going to happen is a will to win. There are many people who approach sales lackadaisically looking for some kind of hack, looking for some way to some magic jelly beans or something like that, right? Those who have a will to win will win. It's that simple. All right. So part of the new Hustlers Kung Fu is we've got a lot of different things going on because like I said, um, this channel it's going to be about, it's going to be for you baby hustlers. It's going to be for you little baby hustlers. And then this, depending, like I'm still working on it. Believe it or not, there's so much that's going on. But I'll talk about that later. All right, one of the first rules of sales is you must figure out what your audience wants. This is where a lot of people go wrong. Let's say this camera. Right. If I put this camera up on eBay, it'll be gone in hours or minutes because it is super, super hot. Now, why is this camera hot? Sony went ahead, made a lot of changes, and they start giving people what they wanted. This camera shoots 4K. This camera has all kind of color profiles. A lot of people want it. And I think it cost me, I don't even remember how much it cost me, but you could still sell it for 1100 to 1300 if you sell with lenses. But the thing is, it's not the camera. It is the features of the camera that the audience wants. Everybody wants to do 4K. Everybody wants the awesomeness of beautiful, crispy 
4K for video. And the 1080p is outstanding and so on and so forth. But it's not the camera. The camera is feature loaded. Interesting. Uh, someone, I came across this blog. Someone is going back to Canon because now Canon finally has cameras for 4K. And they shot with Canon cameras for 20 years. So they're really used to the, the style and the form factor of a Canon. Once again, Canon has an audience already. Sony has an audience already. This audience was not built up overnight. Took time and attention to get it. I mean, Sony's been at this for a long, long time. You know, it's funny. And as I think about it, I went from Sony to Canon back to Sony. My first camera, you know, the one with the black bars, it was a Sony Cybershot. Then I got a little camcorder because I didn't know anything about DSLs. And then I moved up to a nicer camcorder, which I ended up giving to my daughter, which shot night vision. I mean, it had amazing clarity, but it didn't shoot 4K. Then I, I got into Canon. And I liked the Canon. I liked the video that the Canon produced. I liked how it made me look and everything. But I went back to Sony because I have brand loyalty. Sony got me. They got a hook in my mouth. I'm, I'm the big fish. They got a hook in my mouth because what I'm saying is once you give your audience what they want and then you brand it a certain way, you could literally have them for life. I've had seven BMWs. More than likely, we'll get another Audi. Brand loyalty. Giving your audience what they want. Now, the will to win. Now, what is that? Because a lot of you don't even know the right questions to ask because... There is this false presumption that everything can be made simple. Everything can be made easy. If it's not simple and easy to digest, it's the fault of the teacher. Is it the fault of the teacher that calculus is hard? Is it the fault of the teacher that computer engineering is hard? No, there are some things that are just hard. Sales is one of those things. It's probably going to take you once you decide to win once you actually take some time and it's like, look, I'm going to learn how to do this. And I'm going to talk about how you can sell on YouTube. I'm going to talk about how you can sell on Facebook. I'm going to talk about how you can sell on all of these different platforms. Because one of the things, and let me go ahead and make this move real quick, that you should understand is selling is not some antiquated special process selling is communicating with people say that with me out loud put it in the comments selling is communicating with people sony's done a lot of work where sony has a brand that people would say they could see this this little sony right and know that the experience is more than likely going to be good took a lot of work for them to get there a lot of work, a lot of time. You, my dear friend, do not have that. You're just like me. I'm a dude on the internet. I got a little branding and a little, well, I, I wouldn't say the audience is little. It's a small audience, but I, I've been here eight going on nine years. So if you want to accelerate the process you're going to have to get into really, really selling and selling all of the time. All right. Um, what's up, O'Shea? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't have any mods. And I got somebody who is... Um, <laughs> just... Alrighty, let's just do this. Let's get rid of, uh, I, I don't even know. There we go.
we'll just do that. I don't really understand people who do that. It is your mother didn't hug you enough or you just didn't get any attention as an infant? I just don't understand. But getting back on the point, one of the things that you have to understand is selling is not some mystical or special or magical skill. It's something that you can do if you're willing to put in the work and the effort. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, let's see what we got in here. This is kind of wow. And, you know, and this is going to, you know, um, I've decided to give you what you need versus what you want because right now I already know what you want. You want super easy stuff, automatic. No, you need to learn how to sell. And I'm going to explain the importance of learning how to sell and how that transmutes onto line. Because I, I got to check this up here. What's up, DJ Slink, Eric and Nicole? Good Lord, that is funny. My lighting is excellent. I don't know what you're talking about. What's up, O'Shea Duke Jackson? Uh, let's see. All right, all right, all right. I'm just going through here. Since I'm going to have to be my own mod today. But when we talk about these true topics, that, you know, this, this is like algebra and algebra two and trig and calculus. This is core foundational stuff that you need, but a lot of people don't want to do that. So I've decided, <laughs> I decided to give you what you need versus what you want. I know this will offend some people. I, I get that. And some people are just like looking for that quick hustle where that's not going to be here on this channel. So this is why selling is so important. And I'm going to tell you a few events that happened in my life when I learned how to sell. Working at Rent a Crate, working like a maniac because, you know, the story. I lied and created my own reference to get the job. So I had to get in there and get it. And as I listened to Mason and Austin, and Mason and uh, Michael, I started to learn how to pitch. Now, what was funny, and I, it took me a few years to realize this, as I got better at that job, my romantic life also got better. It was like on this parallel. I remember we were getting ready to do Neocon, which was a, an exhibiting show for facility managers and building managers, people like that. And I was just talking to Michael, and we were just talking about, you know, he, like, He's a hard ass at work, but, you know, clock's off. He's one of the best guys to ever hang out around. And I was telling him about something, and then he gave me some stuff, and then I used it, and it worked. So if you learn how to sell really, really well, your romantic life will improve, your friendships will improve, and your home life will improve. Because real selling is saying, okay, you have a problem. How many of you have heard me say, you know, someone's like, look, I'm trying to do this. And I was like, don't buy it. I can't help them solve their problem. But someone that's like, oh, well, I, I have these needs and requirements. Well, get this. Selling is matching up needs with a resource. That's all selling is. It's not this crazy stuff. Uh, Frankie DJ, how to handle smart buyers who already know a lot about the products price plus the wholesale price? Well, I'm going to also, I was going to address this in course, but I was like, some of you need to get into different fields of selling on that question. Whatever product that you're selling, if the people know the wholesale price, they know the retail price, 
and they're just going to try to grind you down. I'm like I'm thinking you're selling cars. You need to get out of that line of business. I was having that problem with Chrysler's and Plymouth's. Then I went to Charles Evans BMW and a lot of that stuff disappeared. So that that's how I would look. Because one of the things that we're going to talk about is everyone has a selling style once they start selling. It's going to emerge. You can be the chatty person. You can be the fact Latin person. So just don't take any sales job. Or if you're selling your own product, well, that's a whole different thing. But you got to develop your sales style. So whatever that may or may not be. <laughs> Y'all are funny today. Like, all right, give you um rent a crate was an educational sale and a transactional sale. We had to educate the customer before they would transact with us. And that's one of the things that really, really helped me sell my products. Now, I'm going to be real with you. It's going to be very, very challenging because a lot of the things that you will have to do to become a better salesperson will feel and look and seem unnatural. Oh, the Chet Home books is, is, is great. Well, part of this is, you know, because a lot of you guys are talking about ejections and stuff like this. Um, the customer has become extraordinarily sophisticated in many, many things. So that's just not going to work. Because also, and this, this is going to sound strange coming from me, but you should work on making yourself likable to your tribe. And whoever that may be for you. Because if you're likable by your tribe, it's going to be very easy for people to buy from you. But if they just get up to you, like, this cat, Run Valentine, uh, this old couple, <laughs> I'll tell you the whole story. This old couple comes in, and, you know, Ron's like, hey, you know, go get them, right? You know, I'm a white guy. I'm wearing a Rolex. I got on a suit. I got the, uh, what is those pins? A Waterman pin or, or some kind of fancy pin. And he's like, man, I'm just, you know, we ain't, it's like oil and water, right? I go talk to them and everything. And they like, okay, thanks for your help and everything. They get ready to leave. Then this new guy who is hungry, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. He didn't know what he was doing. Come on back here. I'm going to treat you right, treat you right. Two hours later, they drive out in a new car. And an old lady, and I'm glad you did it to me, Grandma, she said, you should have tried harder. I was like, oh. This is how the game is played. Everybody lying. Everybody playing games. Everyone's trying to hide their hand. So I got vicious and I started making sales. <laughs> um, objections is part of every sale. I'm going to really disagree with that. That is not true. There are sales that you would just get for just showing up. There are sales that you have to work for. There are sales that will land in your lap. That, that is not true. See, one of the things that you, all right, I, I'm going to explain to you like this. And we're going to talk about pussy. OK. There are many times that the pussy is on the table. All you got to do is pull out your dick and get busy. But no, you're looking for objections. You want to have these conversations with them and you literally talk yourself out of the pussy because you feel that you need to do more, speak more, say more. One of the things and I, I don't have a book. But if you can learn how to read body language and the silent clues, you can make money. 
There are not objections to every sale. There are objections to some sales, but there are not objections to every sale. Not at all. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, and I'm not going to get into that because I'm going to get into that on disruptive mail, but I use that as an attention grab because you can't sell nothing to anybody unless you grab their attention. And the fact that all of y'all are running over there, the disruptive mail tells me something because that's where a lot of folks would want to be. That's cool. But a lot of you have literally talked yourself out of pussy. Looking for objections and stuff. So don't say that. Walk into uh, a big part of it is your attitude. Walk into the situation and mentally say, I'm going to win. And also, one of my little tricks was to get the people to say yes four or five times. You know, not obvious stuff, and there was a there was a tempo and a pattern to it. Used to be, if you can get someone to say yes five or seven times, your likelihood of them buying some from you went up dramatically. Uh, someone did a study, and they had a webinar, and they got people to say yes 150 times. And they had an 80% sell-through rate. So the power of getting people to agree with you. There's all kinds of stuff we're going to talk about in the course. That's why I've decided to expand it and to get deep into it. So just forget all the stuff. There's objections. Um, it depends on what you're selling. Depends on who you're selling to. Dep there's a lot of variables. And that's why it takes time for people to become good and i believe anyone can become good to great at selling and then there's a few people who be, who could just become exceptional so that is what i believe now let's talk about subliminal selling i've noticed because you know i watch all the channels the lambo boys and stuff and i have noticed that there's been a shift and anytime there's a shift there's something that happened. And I figure that a lot of people are not buying because now they're talking about LLCs. They're talking about trust and, you know, and how they organize their business. And there's a lot of proof of concept stuff that's going on. And it's really interesting because here's the thing. To a 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year old, you being in a small bedroom, as one of the commenters said, with no sheets on the beds, but talking about you make 10, 20, 30 K a month, somewhat becomes incredulous to most people. It's just like, all right, I hear what you're saying. I like what you're saying, but that sheet and that roach on the wall, that's kind of giving me pause. What's happened is the internet has become bigger and like for many years, I sold my storage auction books and stuff against a blank white wall. Worked great. Does not work anymore because people subliminally are saying, hey, if you're that good, if you really got it going on, why don't you look successful? Which is a fair question. I mean... These dudes are saying these things and they're being forced to buy houses to keep the sales going in. They're being forced to buy certain things that they don't really even need. Uh, I had someone was like, well, you know, you got two used cars. I was like, yeah, they're paid for. Is your car paid for? Do you even have a car that you want? I got no response on that. It was funny, but. You got to look su successful. And I want to tell you the other day I got a warning, right? And I honestly think that the warning came because when he ran my tag and he saw the vehicle was uh, in the name of a company, he went easy on me. I find out that people let me in the traffic more so in the Audi than the, the, the SUV. Audi all day long, but the, the Audi is bright yellow. It's a attention giller. Everyone loves that car. So when you look successful, 
and you live successful, it is subliminal selling. Ty Lopez. Anyone notice that Ty Lopez has got GQ smooth? He's lost weight. He had that big house that worked for a while, but then he's like, oh, I got to work on me. Because, see, you know, part of the reason I have all these channels is you got to be successful more than money. You got to be successful with your manhood. You got to be successful. There, there's so many things I can teach you, and this channel is just designed for business. So lumping all that onto this channel has caused problems. Why, why, do, you, why do you have two cars? Why not? Answer that question. Why not? How many knows you just let a pers prospective buyer go? As one of my sales mentors says, we need sales today. We need sales tomorrow. We need sales next month. We need sales next week. And we need sales next year. Unless you just really mucked it up or I don't know what you're selling, you'll never let the prospect go. This is talking about the sales process. Give you an example, and this will be a freaky Craigslist story. There was this chick, she, 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 she rejected, got caught up in there. She rejected me. Just looked at me like, no, not you. Picked my face up and went on about my business. There was nothing I can do. It was in the public place. Six months later, she responds to another ad. And I'm like, you know it's me. Me there. But instead of me going to her, I made her come to me. She came, opened up the door, she walked in. I tell you that saucy, sordid story is, you don't ever give up. You don't give up. And it just, just once again depends on what you got going on. D-Train Buck, I have two used cars, a used pickup, and a used dump truck. I'll pay for except the taxes. Go on with your bad self. Uh, rugged Collars, I'm now up on sales on items just by asking for the money. I did this right after a sale, and my sales have grown like 10 to 15%. Asking for the money is no joke. Yeah, you have to ask people to subscribe. You get 20% more subscribers by simply asking. <laughs> that's funny everlasting glow I have three cars to a paid off last one is very close to being paid off mine his and ours can't you see that that's how it should be bumblebee 20 last three cars I bought and paid in cash I don't finance cars Jessica when you can get it and pay for it in full sometimes several times over why not Lamo, complete the mission, never quit. Yeah. Uh, Fajita, isn't why not wasting money or am I in the poor person's mentality? All right, well, let's just talk about this. Cars are depreciating assets. I have two cars because I want them. That's pretty much it. It ain't even that complicated. I just wanted them. Uh, one of the things that I did and I've almost got everything I wanted. When I was a kid, I was poor. And there was a lot of cars that I, you know, I saw growing up that I could not get them. So I systematically have gotten all those cars. That's pretty much it. I mean, I really don't drive that much. I just uh, changed my insurance. And it's like 5,000 miles per car per year probably won't even exceed that because I don't really drive a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't have a commute. <laughs> I mean, uh, once again, you know, people are all over the place. There are some millionaires. They don't have a car. They live in New York. They don't make any sense for them. I just want two cars and probably will get a third. And I'll have three cars. I will tell you, it is nice when I, I had the brakes done on the Audi today and I actually upgraded the brakes. So while my car was being serviced, I still had another car 
to drive that I like driving. Last time I had the Audi service and I had to rent a car, I took that car back because I hated the way that it drove. And I switched it out like three times. I'm weird like that. So it just really, really depends on what you want to do, how you want to do it, how you want to set it up. Because one of the reasons I do all of this stuff is to make myself happy. If I'm not happy, I'm not going to do it. And I understand what a privilege it is to be in this position. A lot of people out there are suffering. They don't even have one reliable car. They just don't. So it just really depends because um, part of living life, and this is one of my motivations, is to do things that make me happy. Uh, When I walk out into the parking lot and I get in my Audi, I smile. When I walk out in the parking lot and I get in my M5, my XM5, I smile. I like the cars that much. They're enjoyable to drive. And I've decided to have the X5 lowered. So that's going to improve the handling. Be real. I have a BMW live in New York City, though there is the train. You do need a car for comfort. Like I said, I don't live in New York, but that's that's a good point. Marcellus T. Uh, number one rule in sales, and you don't follow this, is make money. Uh, one of the things I'm doing in I'm not trying to be a dick, but when I was answering all these questions, people was like, what the hell was this stream about? So, and when I do an LLC, be sure to be here. Uh, Let's see. I have five cars, which a couple will break down at some point. Uh, Louis DeSello, people are going to judge regardless if you're behind a blank wall or not. They were judging Ty Lopez and he lives in the mansion. Now, to be fair, Ty knew what he was getting into. You can't be having your commercial on every virtually every YouTube video and not catch some, catch some L's. He knew what he was getting into. He's a big boy. And that, that's one of the things that's going to happen. You're going to be judged. If you go to your family right now, like, look, I want to be in sales. You're going to get all kind of negative. It's like, well, it ain't steady. If you don't work, you don't make any money. Josco, why not is the reason why success is necessary to afford the option to say yay and nay. Even the stenches of people find something they want to buy. Be real, these videos have replaced ESPN in my life. Did you see what Kirk Cousins got? 84 million guaranteed for three years? You like that? I know he did. So th- this is just some of the stuff because I implore all of you to become good at sales. It's not just about making money. It will it will vibrate throughout the spectrum of your life for you to learn how to do sales. And, you know, I'll go back to first the rental crate experience, which was awesome. But you know what? I really learned how to do sales. Craigslist. Putting an item on Craigslist, having that person physically come to the warehouse. And in the beginning, I was closing like 25% of the deals, which was okay. But I was just like, man, most folks are leaving. There's some right. It was a pricing issue. It was a picture issue. It was an expectation issue. And over a period of years, I solved all that. And virtually, if they came to the warehouse, unless they were racist, and I'll tell you that story in a minute, they left with it. Because I learned how to price it. I learned how to take pictures. So my closing rate was like 90-something percent. Now, this is a lesson that happened. I put, I got this killer unit i mean this stuff was prime you couldn't tell it was new i sold it as new because you couldn't tell it wasn't new and this was in the tucker the yeah the tucker store head on craigslist good stuff lady comes in and instantly she's like gets all tight 
and she started finding excuses. Now I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the email. She's like, I want it, hold it. Oh, this is perfect. And she sees it in person. It is not even any, it's better in person. And she immediately got tight. She got uncomfortable. She turned red and it, she was just a racist bitch. And I was like, you can leave now. I'm not going to do anything to your racist ass. You can go run along, run along, get the fuck out of my store. Cause that's what it was. She didn't expect that someone black would have something that nice. And she was just like, and this, this, and this is what's so messed up about it. She was a pound puppy. I mean, she was like five, six, 210 pounds, pockmarked skin. I'm like, I don't want to even put my penis anywhere near you. Matter of fact, make this purchase and get out because I, mean, I might lose a couple, a couple of inches because you're not nothing nice. And that that's just one of the weirdest things because get a nice, cute little girl, no problem. But a lot of these old, overweight, ugly, 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 had the nerve to be racist like as if I want them. <laughs> it, it, it's just wild. But after all of those data points of people coming in and figuring out where I went wrong with my ad and I developed this protocol that worked out really well. I just recently sold a lot of stuff, cleaned out the other office. Uh, some people think that I'm going out of business because I cleaned out the other office. Well, we'll see what happens the rest of the year. Um, the, the lessons are still there. I haven't actively resold stuff, but it all came back. I mean, I sold most of the Macs for more than anyone else or matched a high price because for those of you who are selling on eBay and you're not filling out that description and not getting those keywords, you're making a big mistake. So. No, this pound puppy wasn't cute. She wasn't cute at all. And, you know, and I'm glad to say that was so rare. That is the most pronounced story. I have two more, I think, but they they were clearly, they covered their racism a little bit. But this, she just like, ah, you know. Three out of thousands of transactions. Three. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, I, I just think that, if you have what people need, even if they're a little racist, they'll still buy from you. So learn how to sell. Now, what we're going to be talking about and ask for the money. And I did not put the links below. <laughs> I'll put them there in a minute is I'm going to go through all of these stages because one of the things that happens in developing online courses is to keep it short get to the point well sometimes you just can't do that to give the student full benefit you just can't you just can't so i'm going to get into the sales modalities and, and kind of like i'm going to expand on who and how to sell to certain races it is what it is i mean indians i had an indian dude he was trying to get the refrigerator and he's trying to get some uh, stuff and he was like almost on that half shit and i just ignored him then i put some other stuff up and i ignored him and i say like, look if you don't want to pay a fi fair price just leave it alone because i'm not going to sell it to you at these absurd indian prices i ain't hear from him oh yeah i mean it just didn't, it just really did not happen that much. And this is one of the reasons that I think that if you're a black male and you want to start a business, start one, go ahead, do it. Don't go into that whole supposition of, well, they ain't going to buy from me because they, no, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. That is self-defeating. So it, it's pretty interesting, but that's where I learned how to sell. And part of it was. It was fun and I was motivated because I kept making sales. It, it was like a little game. 
And also, it benefited me tr directly. I mean, it wasn't like there was a split or a cut or anything. Uh, mobile beat maker. I have a small, simple. All right. I am not in the business of answering questions. Let's, let me let me be real straight about that. And I'm not going to be offensive or even rude to you. Uh, I am not going to answer any question emailed to me that's not about one of my courses. Or I'm not going to answer some five or six or seven part paragraph question because I get paid for that stuff. Um, one of the things that learning how to sell is you got to set expectations and standards. And one of the things that I've done, and I don't even regret it, I've given out tons of valuable advice. And now I'm just like, I ain't doing it anymore. So if you want to talk to me, if you heard or you can watch this, everyone who buys asks for the money, I'll get on the phone with you. But you got to buy the course. I am not getting on the phone with you when you have no skin again. And you want to know why? When I brought out my first storage auction book, which was selling for $19.99, I got on the phone with this dude, and we talked for almost two hours. Do you think he dropped that $19.95? No, he did not. Talking to you does not make me money. Oh, I know. That's rude, right? You know, we, we're this the internet. We all supposed to be a big, big, happy family. And that's why 70% of this country is poor there's a reason that 75 percent of this country is poor or close to it this notion because there was a point in america where family took care of people people took care of family we're past that and i've just had and also you know i gave away these courses for free for six months and i went through it and it was sad do you know that 9% of the people who got those free courses did not open up one? Didn't oh, crack it open. Just like, oh, it's free. Let me get it. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. So me giving out free advice is pretty bad because what happens is, well, it's free. I got a question for some of you dudes, and I want y'all to be real. How many of you had a side piece or girl, you were just smashing. She didn't require that you take her out or nothing. Smash for many, many months. Then one day she wanted to have a real relationship. How many of you converted to a real relationship? Be honest. I want to know. D-Train, at some point time runs out when you spend it poorly. That's a beautiful quote. And sell. My experience has been once people see you know everything about what you're selling, they will buy, they will buy it no matter how black you are. <laughs> one. Reginald, you got one. Because typically, it doesn't turn out that way because the dude's like, I was fucking you for free. I ain't trying to change this dynamic. I like you, but I don't like you that much. Mr. Knowledge, not one, not me, not me. <laughs> that simple dynamic works across the spectrum of humanity. And I it is it's I'm gonna say it. If a chick is kind of marginally attractive, she don't need to be putting out that much. A porn star, a cute porn star, can take it up the ass and still get married. But a girl who is marginally attractive? Mm-mm. Ain't happening. Sensei Snowden, that's funny. Dwayne Bryant, dang. Josco, never! Zola, no smash conversions. <laughs> All right, mobile beat maker. And that's another thing. So you should be checking out the other channels because what's going to happen is the appropriate content is going to be at the appropriate channel. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of male stuff I can talk about. Well, I've got disruptive, ma disruptive mail. Uh, I had a burner there the other night. And uh, there's one that's uploaded on Digital Citizen. And 
give me a few weeks and the schedules and stuff will come out. Smash, eat, go home. Oh, I, I'm not even worried about YouTube because see, the thing is, uh, I'll talk about in Digital Citizen. I have a plan for YouTube and I, I know it's going to work because I've seen it work for other people who've embarked on it. But um, Marcellus T, she was also married. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> boy, 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 the things I learned about y'all, but when you offer stuff for free and also how many, how many of you know of this free ebook, this free report at some point it gets kind of ridiculous. You know, like a um, new book I'm going to write, I will have a free offering, but it'll be the first chapter. It won't be the whole book. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> the way only certified simp will have a relationship with a certified side of coleslaw. I think I'm going to do this topic on disruptive mail. Because <laughs> actually this is going to be good. Coleslaw, but selling, like I said, um, my life got really, really good in all areas. Now, the family life did not. And when I mentioned family, I mean the, the mother and the siblings. And that was a whole different ball game because someone asked me and she was just like, you know, I've been thinking about what you told me about your family. And it's like, it does not make sense. You wrote a book. You did this. You did this. You got, I was like, are they crazy or just jealous? Uh, there's a lot of helpful people online. And you want to know why there's a lot of helpful people online. A lot of that is first layer advice. They don't get granular with it because they don't know how. Like the thing with the sales course. I'm going to take you from, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, Glendon, to open, pre presentation, close, all this other stuff. Because what I did, like today, I updated. Matter of fact, I, I forget that I am here and I actually can show this. All right, hold on. Let's get into it. All right. So we're going to go down here and the plan is to put something in here every other day for a while. Because I re, you know, because you already got it. You're going to have to go in there again because I changed stuff around. But the offer section is almost, it's an hour and almost 40 minutes. And then I'm going to put some other stuff in here. So I'm going to be moving things around. But, and I got to change that because the offer is everything. But what this does is makes more sense because you got to work on the offer first. Uh, you can't sell without attention. You, you just can't unless it is like a cupcake or something. And then you get into the subliminal selling because I meant to take a picture of this aisle because it, it would have fit very well into the topic because it was. Um, it was really interesting because it was Mexican candy and food, but it was in a very high visibility area. And I meant to take a picture of it because that means that stuff is selling. They would not waste that area or waste that space on something that wasn't selling. So it, uh, it is selling very well. It is selling like hotcakes, right? So that's just some other stuff because everybody is not going to be out here in these streets selling something, right? But 
you're going to be moving product some way, somehow through either presentation, through um, content. So that's going to happen. So that's definitely going to be something worth getting. Now, while I'm in here, well, let me come out of here because I didn't do it. I don't know what he's talking about. My lighting is horrible today. It's actually pretty good. Maybe that was part of the hate parade that was happening earlier. Going to the topic on your other channel. A lot of people haven't heard about it. That's why they think that that's cool. So that's one of the things. So if you want it, um, matter of fact, I'm just going to do this while I'm in here. Because this will be the thing that I will be working on. Because you, you got to learn how to sell. I mean, it's imperative that you learn how to sell on some level. And I think it was kind of one of the rites of passages for a lot of us. Because when I was a kid, we had to all that stuff they sent home for you to sell. My mother didn't sell that stuff. I had to sell that stuff. I had to go around and talk to people and present and that I had to ask for money. <laughs> I had to ask for money. I mean, even as a kid. Oh. That's one of the things. All right, so we will put all of this in there. So as for the money, it's going to get very large. So for those of you who bought it way back when, you're good to go. You're already in there. So you are set up. Because if you learn how to sell, there are so many doors that will open up for you that will just be mind blowing. Also, um, for those of you who are so inclined, Never Broke Action Pack includes 30 days to 2,500, 30 days to 2,500 physical products, asking for the money, disruptive money personal, 24 hour startup, and a few other gems for your learning pleasure. All right, so. And booyah, they're now under the video. So let's go back to the watch page. Mm. Uh, let's see. Appreciate you, D-Train. I think that person was a hater. I think that just was a little little hate. <clears throat> a lot of hate. Let's see. Did I switch back? I did not switch back. There we go. Now we're back. Health before wealth. Selling the service, the same technique as a product? Nope. Ain't even close. Ain't even the same universe. Wagn... What you apparently you've not been looking <laughs> in the right places or you don't know how to do research and I'm not being offensive because um, hold on get out of that get out of that all right so I can show come on just disappeared. Don't tell me they're eradicating all the web references. No, just playing. It's for some reason. Oh, there we go. Come on. All right. So here's one. I'm going to. It's called. Uh, 
black perspectives, men without pants, masculinity and enslaved. And I'm going to just scroll down here. Uh, by forcing young African-American boys and men to wear dresses like shirts, the owners of the flesh attempted to feminize and humiliate enslaved males on a daily basis. It took me all of 30 seconds to find that. And there's a lot more. Um, I don't know why you can't find that. I don't know what keywords you're using because there's lots of stuff on the Internet about that. Uh, Geomeric, should you build my. Uh, Geomeric, I don't really know your question. If your question is, should I buy super credit first or save up to 10 grand? I think super credit is like 99 bucks. So I don't see how that would really hurt you from saving 10 grand. How do you learn how to sell? You take the course. Uh, D-Train, I've been to too many long hours of sales trainings. Rugged Collar, how many ways are there to ask for the money? Oh, there's so many ways. There's the silent close. There's the suggestive. There's so many ways. And just like straight up, hey, may I have your business? Which is real blunt. Also, it takes a lot of people off guard because then they don't they can't make up some stuff real quick. So let's see. Hold on, let me do this. So there's a lot of it. Uh, you should do both at the same time. It's going to take you a minute to clean up your credit. So you should do both. You shouldn't do one or the other. You should do both. So that's how you should handle that. So there's a lot of ways. Yes. Health before wealth. I will show you how to sell a service. Because service things are way different. Very different because like a physical product. All right. I bought this from B&H Photo without even thinking about it. Now, why did I buy this from B&H Photo without thinking about it? I used a credit card. So if something went hanky, I'd get my money back. I mean, there was no risk to buying this physical product. Whereas buying a service, there can be risk. People may not show up when they say they're going to show up. They may not do a good job. So that's a whole different thing. <laughs> all right d train that's funny all right so i'm about to roll out for those of you who want to learn how to sell we're going to be adding a lot more training in ask for the money or if you want to save yourself some money well actually you can get the course which is less than the bundle so that's how we're going to do that all right so um before i go Let's do this real quick. Let me come out of there. All righty. So here we go. So let's see what happened today. We had an upload of Digital Citizen. That's there. Last night, we had an upload at Disruptive Mail. This one, <laughs> which, which is very, very deep. And, and then this stream today. Tomorrow, I will be adding more. Oh, okay. Now, so, see, now we're getting in this. So now, YouTube's doing the thing. It's because uh, Stefan has a lot of men. Sandman has a lot of men. And at some point, I'm probably going to get really young Turks as the channel grows and more people watch it. So this new YouTube strategy, which I'll discuss here. And I'm probably going to do some 
a little fuckery tomorrow here. Yeah, I need to upload because I, I will get the scheduling stuff together and I will get my things in intact here. So there will be more content because the tomorrow is Thursday. This week has like flown by. I mean, it's just been this week has been gangster. It's been gangster, gangster, gangster. So be sure to subscribe to the appropriate channels for the content that you like. Digital Citizen. That is YouTube online. Any way you can make money digitally, that's going to be Digital Citizen. I am Cameron. That's my fuckery channel. That's where the stories would be. Uh, disruptive mail, 100% unadulterated mail content. Also, I'm going to fill out a few more channels, but those are the main channels that stuff's going on. And as I grow and get the scheduling, I'll let you guys know. So be sure to subscribe because I guarantee you, I thought Digital Citizen, and you know, I'll talk about this. If you're going to start something online, you should not just start one project. And this is something I did 2009 at PassionateFriday.com, digital um, this business credit mentor, and UrbanPackRat.com. I started all three at the same time. Now, what this does, and I'll even go into this little business lesson. All right, say this is the back end, right? This is the editing, content generation, cameras, all this. This is the back end. This is one channel, two channels, three channels, four channels, five channels. So I can run probably seven or eight channels from this one back end. That was a serious business lesson that I just gave you. All right, so we'll be talking about more stuff. Let me see what's going on in the chat room before I depart. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man, because there's a lot of references on that. Thank you, Sensei. And so with that, I am out. I will check you guys out tomorrow. Peace out. <laughs>